Good evening and welcome to On Point, where we talk to successful women and men of Fiji, wherever they may be. This evening, I, Ellen Whippy knight have with me one of Fiji's most successful fashion designers, Moira Solvalu. And Moira, welcome to the show. Thank you, Ellen. How are you today? I'm good, thank you. That's great. You are probably one of the most successful designers that Fiji Fashion Week has had in its 12th year. And one of the main reasons is that Moira was actually a regional operations manager West for a shipping company in Latoka. And then she decided that she might follow her dream to become a designer, a fashion designer. What's happened in those 10 years, and she celebrated her 10 years this year, 2019, is that you have won seven awards in 10 years. That's an amazing achievement. Tell us how you actually decided to switch from shipping to fashion. Well, I grew uh, fashion as an online business, uh, basically for almost, say, seven years. Mm -hmm. And then when the demand got too much, that's when I started questioning whether or not, because as an entrepreneur, you're scared. There's security when you're working full time. But when you um, now have to pay for your own bills and worry about paying your staff and everything, then there comes in the big question whether or not I should jump off the cliff. And when the demand was high, I said, if I can make money for this shipping company, make a million dollars for them every time, I can do it easily for my own if I put the same focus back into it. So that's where the drive came from. Moira, uh, I, as you know, you and I have worked quite closely together when I put my other hat on, which is um, a managing director of Fiji Fashion Week. Uh, we've worked very closely together in the last 10 years, and I really have been amazed at the focus and the drive and the passion that you have put into your work. Because I do remember in about, uh, I think it might have been five years into the business, and when online shopping became that thing to do, as opposed to bricks and mortar and shop fronts, you were already at that time, and I, and I hope you don't mind if I say that now, because I did ask you the question. At that time, you were already pulling in, and it wasn't even the end of the year, at $60,000 worth yes. of online shopping, mm -hmm. and that was you know less than, in t less than 12 months. Mm -hmm. So where did the design element um, come from? Is it in your family? And, and how, what did you do to deliver what you have now? I remember when I was 11 and I, uh, my father asked, you know, around the table, what do you kids want to be when you grow up? My mom had lots of simplicity and um, clouds, I think, I think. Oh, the patterns. The pattern books. And they were like this thick and they were paper, you know, the paper ones. So yes. I used to flip through them in the Bazaar magazines, Vogue, and I used to wish I could be a designer like that. And then Happy came along on TV, so you have something local to relate to. Yep. And um, that was where the passion for designing came from, because I knew I had like the creative aspect to it, but I didn't know how to come go along being a fashion designer with no finances. But why did your mother have all those books in your home? My mom was a self-taught tailor. Well, there you go. Yes. So she must have had that natural yes. ability which has obviously passed yeah. on to you. Then you saw Hupfeld. Yes. Uh, so I said, oh, okay, if some, and he had been Rotuman as well. Eh? I said, okay, if he can make it happen, so can I, you know, mm. if, I, if I can just try. But at 11, I was told, forget about it. That's well, not even right. a career. There's no, no one's teaching it in school. Your mother's sewing it for like $5 a shirt. Is that the career you want for the rest of your life, sitting and slaving over you know, a sewing machine? And so I put that dream aside and I said, okay, maybe later. So I got married and then I got a shipping job and I said, okay, look, I get commissions and bonuses here and there. So obviously I can save to make that dream come true. So that's how it happened. Were you actually able to sew? Yes. Were you actually able to make patterns? Yes. I'm fortunate, my mom being, you know, the old school tailors, um, everything is taught. So I, from maybe say eight, nine, we would go every Saturday morning, it's a habit. Mm -hmm. We would go to the market, and then just around the market in Lotoka, we had paddies. And they used to have right. this little pattern, pattern, um, what you call packets. Yes. You can buy them for like $2 a packet. Yes. 
And we used to stroll there and then from there to the Fiji Times office to collect whatever papers that they had get. so I can cut them. So I learned very early how to do pattern cutting. And I'm fortunate that I learned it from my mom because that's something that I treasure till today because mm. it's really important for that side of the business to take place. Oh, absolutely. I think the most important thing is, is that, uh, as you said, you, you, you've got to understand, you have to be able to understand how patterns are made. Yes. Um, and then, of course, is being able to stitch it together because if you can't stitch it together, mm. uh, then it makes it very impossible for you to be able to deliver that message to your actual tailor. But your business has now grown. You left, you left Aswire um, at the end of 2017 to focus on fashion. And, and I think one of the interesting things is, is that, you know, you obviously had a lot of faith in your ability because Aswire was a very well-paid job. And we all know how difficult it is to make money in fashion. Mm. Um, yeah, but you, because it grew organically, I already knew that there's orders there. Um, so we have a suva shop, and then we had the Lotoka one. And then I decided, you know, if anything, if the economy in Fiji does go down, I've got to make sure I have export markets. And that's where we went. So right now it's building into Pacific Islands and then maybe hopefully in the next three years I should have something steady in the US but we've just opened our online as well so that's pretty much slow right now with it coming through the website um, because now I have to push everyone through my Facebook into my website link and tell me the, the how big is the business how many people do you have working for you and what does it take to be able to take that business from homegrown into a commercial sustainable um, operation? Well, I have 18 staff permanent. 18 yes. staff? And apart from when that... When I first met you, had two staff. Yes. And apart from that, we hire women from squatter settlements. So that's right. our corporate social responsibility. We work with women from squatter settlements. So there's a training program that we give them in-house, and then we send them with the machine and the kit. And fortunately, last year, I had funding from WIHA, um, and why gap they made sure to assist with regards to getting those uh, kits to our, our tailors out there so lotoka um, used to be used to have factories like gimli you know those yes. really huge yes they were uh, factories but then after they left there has been a gap in the market and so a lot of women are sitting at home they're probably in their 40s 50s and they don't have jobs mm. so and most of them are displaced into squatter settlements mm. so this is where we work with them because they already know how to sew so it's easier for us to do the training from them so that's, that's an amazing program and how long have you been doing that this third year now i test run ran it in 2017 before i left work and it worked tremendously for me um, then 2018 i got funding from why her and then 2019 wow. we're going bigger fantastic yeah. you're with us on on point with Moira Salvalo one of Fiji's most successful designers and we'll be back straight after this break good evening and you're back on on point with Ellen Whippy Knight and Moira Salvalo one of Fiji's most successful designers we're just talking about the development of her business from a homegrown business to a highly commercial operation with shops nearly in about three different countries at this moment. Moira, you were just saying about the women that you are taking on as your staff members in Latoka there and who were displaced, but now you've given them this major opportunity. That's just a fantastic achievement. And it's rewarding as well watching them also grow. Our plan is to take them out from the squatter settlements one by one into more permanent dwelling places. And if they can buy into eight mountains as well in the future, that's what we hope to be able to give back. That's fabulous. Mm -hmm. Now tell me something about eight mountains. How did the label come about? Because you, uh, when I first met you in 2009 when Fashion Week was held at Albert Park, I didn't know anything about you. I didn't know much about Fashion Weeks ourselves because we were all very new to this. Mm -hmm. And it was obvious that your collection was going to be plus, was a plus size collection. Having been to many Fashion Weeks uh, prior to that in Sydney, I had never seen a plus size collection, so I didn't know what to expect. What's the story behind that? 
Um, my surname translated from Rotuman into English is Eight Mountains. Salvalu. Yes. Right. So I thought it was a good um, label name because it's it's like mountains. It's beautiful Absolutely. landscapes. And if you know how to dress them, then, you know. Um, so that's the same thing with Eight Mountains, the name. We uh, cater more for the plus size and ensure that the plus size women have something unique and beautiful. Right. You know. But why did you specifically target um, the plus size market? Well, I was uh, designing more for the women like me, mm. finding it hard to find clothes out there. Um, and if we did, it's sack like. So everything's just the square. And then they say, don't put too many prints and all that stuff. So for me, it was more for me, designing for a woman, Pacific woman like myself. And if I loved what I could sell and what I did, then obviously other women out there would love the same thing as well. Yes, because you've definitely put a lot of sophistication into that look. Mm -hmm. Women look very glamorous. Now, the, the, the thing about Eight Mountains as well is that every single year and every single collection you bring out is brand new and every collection is meant to be brand new but basically when I say brand new you're always coming up with new concepts where does that all come from um, I sit and think about it I get inspired um, from Fiji um, I try for the world to see what Fiji has to offer not the other way around um, so that's where my designs come from um, Every day I'm looking for something different and something that catches my eye, something that I could take global and say, hey, this is a Fiji designer coming in. So, yes, I pretty much, my husband hates it that I sit full time in research. I, I'm always researching world trends and stuff. And then when he sees something like, um, I think last week he saw something from Robert Ca uh, Roberto Cavalli and he yes. says, hey, look, you're on point with your trending. And I'm like, oh, very good. Yeah, all those nights, you know, you don't yeah. waste them. No, that's yeah. right. So. And of course, both you and I are wearing yeah. eight mountains today. This is so pretty. I love the color. I love the fit. It might be a tad too tight, but you know, who cares? And it's comfortable. That's the thing. Yeah. And, and, and what you're wearing is what, and I like the fact that you've got the turtles on them. Mm -hmm. And I saw eight mountains. Yeah. Um, your branding actually on your clothes. What's this? Where did the inspiration come for this? Uh, that one was from the turtle. So in uh, Motusa, there's a turtle that is known to safeguard the sea. Um, it saved a woman once when she drowned. So there's a legend that, you know, comes with a turtle. My mom's got some blood from there and we've always thought about it, that the turtles were beautiful. But I see that people just portray the turtle on its own. Mm. And I wanted a 3D version of the turtle. So if you see, this is part of the, f the flippers. Yes, yeah. yes. And the world trend right now is an animal print. Oh, and absolutely. This sort of goes with it. So. And I think you're also yeah. bringing out the fact that, you know, the, the another world trend is beginning to look after our marine life yes. because of the degradation yeah. of, uh, you know, of marine life yeah. due to... This specific Pollution. collection, the Hoi collection, 10% of it goes to Lache Rotuma Initiative. Um, it's, a, it's a group put together to help with looking after the conservation of the, the land, the culture, and the language. Mm. And they, they do a really good job on the island, especially with uh, women like myself who at one stage did not have a platform to come out and sort of design. Mm. There's a lot of women in Rotuma that is coming out with their designs and their own handicraft work and all that stuff. So we'd like to be able to support that. So 10% of this goes back to them too. You know, this is, you're, you're just the whole package. You really are. Uh, you know, later on in the program, we're going to talk about your sustainability um, project. But uh, you mentioned Rutuman, and I know, I know you're Rutuman. What is it about Rutumans? They're so creative. In Fiji Fashion Week, we have, or in the fashion, and I'll just talk about designers in general, and the creative people. There's you, there's Hupfel Herder, there's Rosie Samisi, there's Michael Mosio, Isia Conrote, David Solomoni, who is, you know, into social media and, and, and digital promotions. Um, it just doesn't really stop there. Those are the main ones that I can remember. And of course, we've got, um, you know, a few other ones that are coming through. Is there somewhere in Rotuma where they're growing designers? I, th I think it's something they put in the biscuit. <laughs> yeah. 
something they put in the biscuit. Well, that's got to be a jolly good biscuit to eat. And I think we should encourage everybody to eat yes. that biscuit. It's hybrid. And, and, and in, in growing your collection, what to, is most important to you when you think about how I can make this bigger? How can I make this more relevant? How do I make more people wear what I think is, um, is good fashion? Um, basically the design. Eh? Everyone in Fiji is doing, uh, uh, we, we went to Samoa last uh, week, we just got back, and having a look at the market there, it's saturated with the same thing. Like everyone's doing the same print, same type of printing, and it's been different. So people now, you know, they can save for something unique, mm. and that's the market we want to touch into. People who start understanding that it's sustainable fashion is better than just getting anything and wearing anything mm. um, that's cheap. So for us, it's basically in the design and how we go about trying to balance that with sustainability in terms of being eco-green. Yes, because that, that is a very big thing. But I also think the other thing why your collection is so marketable, for what it is, for what you've done for it, um, you know, your price points um, are, are excellent. Mm -hmm. I would be expecting to pay much more than you actually put out there. But I mean, you've been in operations you know, in your life and you know what business is about. So you've obviously worked out a formula yeah. where you can make a profit but still make the clothes affordable for people. Yeah. Um, I guess working in shipping as well has helped me sort of tidy down all the neat oh. ends, so it helps. Um, and not just that, having, for us basically, in Fiji alone, it's hard to look for good fabric, so it's sourcing from suppliers overseas, yes. so right, we tidy it down right to the, the scent. Yes, yeah. I think that is one of our issues, isn't it? Mm is um, finding the good fabric for yes. people here and for young designers to be able to afford that. I mean, you know what it's like. You've brought your collection from, uh, from 2009 all the way here mm -hmm. in terms of its success by finding the right materials that you can afford and then converting that yes. into something that makes a profit to make, you know, like everybody needs to make, make a profit. Mm -hmm. When we come back, let's talk some more about your um, sustainability project because that's one of my uh, mm. things that we wanted to introduce this year as well. We'll be back with On Point and Moira Solvalu just straight after this break. <laughs> Welcome back to On Point with Ellen Whippy Knight and of course with Moira Solvalu and we're having a great chat about this most successful business that Moira has established over the last 10 years. Moira, you are also uh, stocking in various other countries and you not only have shown in Fiji your collections at the number of shows here uh, but also overseas. What are the other shows that you've done and where exactly do you have other uh, shops where you stock? We've done the Royal Pol Polynesian Fashion Show outside of Fiji. Yes. Yes. Um, and other than that we have stock in New Zealand, Samoa and Tuvalu. So that's three, right, countries. three countries. New Zealand, Samoa, Tuvalu. Right. And in Australia? Australia we haven't. We're still online with Facebook. Right. Um, but we hope to soon. That's the next plan uh, for the next year. And you've shown in a couple of different shows overseas. Yes. What's the uptake been for you uh, in, you know, when understanding that a fashion show is mainly a trade show where you attend to see clothes that you would like to buy mm -hmm. and not just people on, this, on this, the guests but um, you know buyers from shops and uh, big retail centers department stores what's it been like for you um, so a classic example of the success behind showing on the runways overseas uh, we showcased at the Royal Polynesia fashion show where was that that was in Auckland Right. And uh, so Samoa, a lot of people from Samoa go and buy from New Zealand. That's the, the trade shows and all that that they go looking for something unique. So uh, our supplier in Samoa right now, she went for the show, she saw it off the runway. She went down to Manor Shop where they stock for us. And she bought a kaftan, loved the quality, loved the print, took it back to Samoa. And she had left the tag somewhere. So she started looking for it to try and give me a call. Found me on Facebook and we're now in Samoa. Wow, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. And as I said you know, earlier on in the show that you are one of our most successful designers. And the reason for that is 
is that designing can be for fun, but it's in a very expensive exercise to be just for fun. You know, there is a lot that goes into it. Mm. And on top of that, you're making the garment, you've purchased the fabric, you're to pay for the production of it. And there's all these outgoings before you actually even get to sell it. Yeah. What has been one of the biggest challenges for you in design? Finance. 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 Um, every year we take out a loan, put it back into the company and push so that the next stock market has as well. And, and it has paid off because uh, we've seen that the markets have grown as well for us. So exports is starting to grow much bigger for us. Um, so we've never looked back. Finance mm. has been hard because you go down to Fiji Development Bank, you go to any bank for that matter. And for small designers like us and entrepreneurs, you need security that's and right. that's something that we don't all have we we have stock we have uh, assets but it's not enough for them to think it's viable enough to grant mm -hmm. us a loan so i've been taking it out on personal loan so that's a secret that i tell other designers you can do you can't say there's no help out there mm. right so we take our personal loans and then we move forward with bigger loans now that we're able to have enough assets to prove that, that there's security. Um, but it pays itself off. Yes, so because the thing is, though, Moira, if you're taking out loans yes. to help develop the business, which is absolutely vital, but then again, you would have to be producing a lot of garments, and your factory mm -hmm. has got to be in full force yes. with staff turning up on a regular basis mm -hmm. to be able to produce all of this. And mm -hmm. one of the big problems, problems I understand is, is you know um, keeping staff. Yeah. Uh, what do you do to make sure that your staff are happy so that they can keep turning up on time every day and producing at the deadlines that you set yourselves? Well, we have a sustainable promise, and that's to be ethical. Yes. So we're ethical with how we pay our staff. We're ethical with the way we train them, and when they when staff feel that. Uh, we also encourage them to design as well. So they come right. out as small designers and we put them out because not every day someone will walk into Eight Mountain Shop and say, you know, we want Eight Mountains only. We have families in Suva that actually have worn all our prints and have it in all different colors that they're asking for something more. And I find that it's easier for me to ask them, come up with your own design and show me that this is what you want to do. And they come up and I support them in that way so we have an alternative label in the shop, uh, you know, for them to buy, mm -hmm. for customers to buy. But it's been ethical. And yes. I think it has a lot to do with roping them to see just how hard the struggle is to yes. keep a company going. And with that sustainability, though, um, are you also, because that is a major big push in the industry, global industry, is using organic, sustainable fabric, sustainable operations. Um, you talked about you know, the ethics of how you're treating your staff and managing them and running the business of fashion, you're doing something really, really interesting. And it'll be the first time anybody in Fiji does it if, they, if you succeed, which I have no doubt you will. And that is you're actually beginning to develop, working on developing your own fibers, yes. which is going to be organic. Yes. Talk to us about that. All right, so um, I thought about you know how we're always challenging ourselves to be organic, uh, be sustainable. And yet here in Fiji, with the vast, dense forest that we have and everything, we, no one's doing anything about researching what fibers we can get out of them. Yes. So we're in a research stage right now um, to do with sugarcane, and also we're looking at banana. So I think it's already happening where in India and in Indonesia they're using banana leaves. Uh, but not to actually take it right to the fiber end. They've gone into baskets and all that. Right. Uh, and into fine uh, fiber that it's like burlap. So right. they've stopped at that stage. Right. Right. Um, so we're looking at using that and taking it further. So there's a few of us putting our heads together. And we hope that the next experiment that we do will be successful. We just. Um, somehow someone in the group is also uh, an entrepreneur and is trying to look at funding 
because right. it's a quite expensive ex It uh, would exercise. be extremely. And that's yes. the whole thing about organic fabric and organic food yes. is that it is extremely expensive. Yeah. So most people take the, the cheaper option, yeah. buy what's already on the market. Mm -hmm. So is the end result to be a fabric that we can use, that yes. anybody can use? Yes. Uh, we've uh, looked at trying to take it from where the last stage is. Uh, so right now they're into filtering that so that it's wearable and then uh, using a bit of polyester to mix with it. Right. So, right. We're at that stage. This right group, um, you haven't named it, seems to be a bit of a secret group? Yeah, just a few friends that um, we share the same passion right. to be more sustainable. And so it's something that I've wanted. Um, I live in the sugar city. We have sugar cane all over. West is best. Yes. <laughs> so um, I said, you know, why, why don't we get together? It's a few friends that have the same passion as I am. Right. They want to see it through. So we're still experimenting and looking for ways to find funding to take that. Oh, I wish you so much luck in that. Mm -hmm. As I said, it will be an extremely fabulous project if it is successful. Yes. That's one thing that we don't have in Fiji, and that mm -hmm. is um, organic fabric. It's so difficult. We've looked at it, but the sustainability aspect of that line, of that um, whole business as well, mm -hmm. is something to be looked at. Um, as we close the show, I, I'd like to ask you one question. Where do you think Eight Mountains will be in five years? And is the fashion industry in Fiji worth supporting in terms of government funding? We've got about 30 seconds. The fashion industry in Fiji is worth supporting, I'd say so. Um, and if designers like myself can find funding out there, then look for friends who have a passion to want to help you. Um, so I have friends who also have come on board. I have siblings who have come on board with their savings. Uh, so the desire to make it mountains work is something that I just, it's not only my savings in it, it's my friends and my family. Yes. So we, in the next three years, I, someone asked me in summer, what do you see yourself in the next three years? And I, where do you see yourself in the next three years? And I said, uh, Fiji's first Rutuman female um, millionaire. And I, I'm one person that through life, I've always ticked off the boxes that yes. I hope, and those are my objectives that I hope to get uh, and achieve. So in the next three years, we should have the same interview. We will do that again the next three years, mm -hmm. when, if not before. We want to see that you are the first female Fijian Rituman millionaires that made it in fashion. And, I, you know, with your drive and your passion and your vision, I mean, the last prize you got, the last award you were given, um, was by the Fashion Council of Fiji People's Choice Designer of the Year. In 2017, you were Fiji Fashion Week's Established Designer of the Year. And uh, as early as 2015, um, you won two awards, you know, Manufacturer of the Year, um, a small to medium-sized business, and Fiji Fashion Week Children Designer of the Year. So with all those awards tucked under your, your belt there, and with the fabulous collection, Eight Mountains, well-loved by the diaspora market and all of our relatives and friends around the Pacific, I don't see why you can't make it more. In fact, I know you'll make it well before the three years. So congratulations again. It's so lovely to have you on the show. And I hope that all the young people sitting out there and listening and watching Maury will get some inspiration from her because it is a fabulous journey. If you're looking for Eight Mountains in Suva, please go down to Palm Court where she has a shop down there. It's a very busy little shop. See Jordana down there and you will definitely, and Morto of course, uh, you will definitely be given something that you'd like to wear wherever you go. So you've been on point with Ellen Whippy Night tonight and we'd love to see you again. See you next Monday at the same time, 8 o'clock.